actually, you know, I didn't have, I read reviews where, um, there was one particular review where the reviewer had a problem with the romance between Leland and the flight attendant. Right. Mm -hmm. And I didn't. I, I didn't mind the romance between Leland and the flight attendant. It was a budding romance. It was new. So, I mean, but they also, they, it was like an eight hour flight. Mm -hmm. It would be, right? So they probably, I think about seven or eight hours. I don't know how long it was, but it was hours. And they talked for the majority of it. Mm -hmm. And most budding romances, or a lot of them, yeah, don't they don't necessarily start to, talk yeah. for that long of a time span. You have mm -hmm. like a coffee date here, a coffee date there, but they just had a really intense conversation and got to know each other really well. So, you know, it's like the equivalent of, you know, a month of coffee dates or something, and they they developed quite the rapport. I didn't really think of their relationship that much as a as a romance. Like, yeah, there was definitely attraction and that kind of thing going on there, right? But with her believing him when he's calling her, like there's there's a lot of stuff in the book that, of mm -hmm. course, different from the movie, right? So with him believing her or her trusting him and supporting him and all that kind of stuff, the thing is, she was very aware and he tried to make her aware through how he was saying things to her. Mm -hmm. For her not to take this personal, he was using her to get a message across, or he was, you know, yeah. different things like that. And with her being a flight attendant, she's a professional who knows how to deal with high pressure situations, right? Mm -hmm. You're trained in all of that. You're also trained that you cannot just say everything out there um, very you have to clearly. Between the lines. You have to speak text. with your colleagues in a way that is clear to them, but is shielding passengers from information that may cause panic, yeah. right? So um, she's used to that kind of conversation. So I think she recognized that that's what the conversation was that was going on. Mm -hmm. She also knew that it was a conversation that was out there for everyone to hear. I just think that she knew what she would, what that the kind of conversation She'd that was going on. she trained to deal with yeah. high stress situation, but but I just want to be clear. When I say romance, I mean like the romantic subplot in the book. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that they were, you know, destined to be together or that they were no, no, having no, this long uh, romance or entanglement or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. I just mean that that was the romantic subplot in the story and mm -hmm. some people didn't buy it. Yeah, They I, didn't buy the relationship or the connection that they had and I did. That's the thing though. I. There was a connection, and I think just thinking about her was helping him get through what he was going through. And he kept thinking about his wife, but he didn't want to do that because that got his wife had passed away. So it's not that the says case. that's mentioned early in the yeah. book. So yeah, um, but if thinking about her was bringing up guilt feelings and negative feelings and stuff that he actually couldn't deal with right then because he had a lot of stuff on his mind. Yeah. It was safe to think about her and it was also a positive thing for him to think about to help him kind of keep going with the fight. He was really surprised that she was hitting on him first. Mm -hmm. They had a spark, they had some chemistry mm -hmm. and he welcomed that. It was a welcome distraction for him mm -hmm. when he was going through all this mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. But there were a lot of things that were also, there were a lot of things that were mm -hmm. from the book that were used in the movie, like yeah. the the no shoes, mm -hmm. the glass, yeah. or, but the glass in a different situation, yeah. Though, yeah. but without giving it away. They, mm -hmm. they use glass, but not in the same way. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, uh, um, the fire hose, mm -hmm. um, I found... There were helicopters, it, but they it was made a little it, bit different. And I think that they made a good choice for the movie because we weren't in John McClane's head. Um, mm -hmm. So they had it more in the movie. They had the killing on his part to be mostly self-defense as opposed to some of the stuff Offensive. that happened in the book yeah. that where he went on the offense and was kind of, there were reasons why he had that little bit of a break, but 
we we were able to read that in his internal dialogue mm -hmm. or whatever, right? That would have been harder to show in the movie and make the hero still likable by the end of it. Mm -hmm. So I I really liked I preferred the movie personally. I mean, I enjoyed the book once I get into it, mm -hmm. and once I I got past the part. Oh right, this is a sequel. Um, but I definitely preferred the movie. The book is not a Hollywood ending. No. But at the same time, you know, it's it's the ending that Roderick Thorpe had in mind. And books, like books, movies, whatever, don't have to have a Hollywood ending to be enjoyable. Yeah. But if it's going to be a Christmas movie, it does. But um, I just, I'm... I'm a sap. I prefer Hollywood endings. I prefer the happy ending, even if it's even if it's bittersweet, mm -hmm. or you know, it doesn't have to be like ah la 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 la. But <laughs> I just <laughs> turned into a Smurf. Um, but I don't like the downer endings. I don't. I, I go to a movie to be entertained, and I even read a book to be entertained. Mm -hmm. if I didn't find the ending a depressing ending. Just. Like, no, I'm not saying you know, it was depressing. I'm just yeah. in general. Yeah, I don't like. I, I just want endings. to be clear that it it still had a, a good end. It's just it was a yeah, little darker. Like, yeah, and I think a good comparison would be um, the 007 movies. You know, some generations of 007 were very uh, playful and jokey and kind of off the wall, and then other ones were very dark like you know a darker side like in Dipping, Living Daylights and and then the Daniel Craig 007 movies which aren't playful like say the uh, Roger Moore Pierce Brosnan Pierce Brosnan was a good mix between the two mm -hmm. I think he was my favorite 007 Pierce Brosnan was I thought Sean Connery was it, no Sean Connery and Pierce Brosnan are really close but I still think actually that that Pierce Brosnan was the quintessential 007. Anybody disagree? I, I don't want to hear from you. No, I'm just ah. If you disagree, comment. I want to hear about it. But I think that's the best uh, an, uh, like comparison. There was the uh, the dark ones, and then there was the lighter side so ones. The, so the movie's more of a lighter side, more of a quippy, making wisecracks and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Very Bruce Willis-esque. And, uh, and the... the the book isn't so much that way. Right. Yeah, I found part of the ending confusing, yeah. but I I can't really say without giving it away. But it was just it, it's there was something that happened with one of the side characters that seemed very out of character. But at the same time, we're not in that character's head. We're only in Leland's head throughout the whole book. So who knows? But. It was just, it was jarring. I had to go back and read it a few times. I did too. To it make was, sure it was that, very puzzling. Yeah. I don't know if that was how Roderick Thorpe had it planned or if he was just like, okay, I want this to happen. How can I make it happen? Oh, I'll just have this character do this. And it just seemed very, it seemed contrived, but it could just have been because he, even though he wasn't writing each character, each character POV, he might have had each character POV in his head. Mm -hmm. So it might have made perfect sense to him right? as he was writing it. Yeah. Especially seeing as some authors will write the other character POVs just to help with their writing, but just not included mm -hmm. in the book. Um, so it's very possible that that happened. I, I just, I found it very jarring. Now, if you guys have read the book, or if you do read the book after this, comment down below, let me know what you think. You'll probably know the scene that I'm talking about. And if you don't, then clearly you don't agree that it was right jarring. So It was right at the end. Yeah, right in the last, last two, two or three pages. And the scene happened in the, in the movie as well. Yeah, but, but different. But that one part of it did not. Yeah. They, they, no, it didn't happen. So... Yeah, Maybe it confused it, the screenwriters too. Maybe they're like, that doesn't fit. Or the screenwriters just had a different vision of that side character. Yeah. And they created that side because they got into other POVs, right? Like we discussed. So they're just like, okay, so might have worked with the character in the book. Does not work with the character we created for the movie. Yeah. 